Welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the steps to require to become a certified CMMC assessor. My name is Darius Phillips and I am a certified CMMC assessor. So I'm going to be giving you some firsthand accounts of everything that is required. Let's do it. CMMC stands for Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, and it is a Department of Defense assessment program, which assesses the security requirements for DOD contractors and subcontractors that receive and or create controlled unclassified information, also known as CUI. CMMC is currently in rulemakings. It's not a final rule yet, which means it's not a regulation as of today. However, it's anticipated by the Department of Defense to become a final rule in the spring of this year. And at that point, it'll be a clause in the Department of Defense contracts, which will require DOD contractors and subcontractors that receive CUI or create CUI to get a third party CMMC certification. So now that you know what CMMC is, let's find out how you can become a certified CMMC assessor. Your journey to becoming a certified CMMC assessor starts at the cyberab.org, which is the CMMC accreditation body. The CyberAB is a nonprofit organization that is authorized by the DOD to issue the CMMC certifications and pretty much manage the CMMC ecosystem. Okay, once you arrive at the CyberAB website, the area you're gonna be focused on is the CMMC ecosystem. So let's start off with what is the ecosystem, give you some, do some basic level settings so you know what who's all included. So CMMC assessment teams will be comprised of certified CMMC professionals and also certified CMMC assessors. And we'll get a little more into the distinction, but right now we just need the overview of the, the role. So the CMMC ecosystem is comprised of registered practitioners. Those are the individuals that perform consulting for the defense contractors, uh, also known as the organization seeking certification. So it kind of helps them prepare for their CMMC assessments. Then you have the certified CMMC professional CCPs. CCPs serve a dual role where they can serve as a consultant, helping those OSCs get ready for the assessments or they can serve on the assessment teams and assess the level one practices. Keep in mind the key word is or, you can't do both. And the Cyber AB has a very strict code of professional conduct, which makes sure that there's no conflict of interest. If the CCP is consulting for a defense contractor, then they can't serve on the assessment team that's assessing that same defense contractor. So there's always gonna be a separation of duty. The LPPs are the organizations that are allowed to create all of the training content. The licensed training partners are the organizations that are authorized to deliver the training for the CCP, CCAs, instructor training, etc. Next, you have the certified CMMC instructors. These are the individuals who obviously will be delivering the training. So it'll be created by the LPPs. It'll be offered by the LTPs and they'll be delivered by the CMMC instructors. Then last but not least, you have the CMMC third party assessment organizations, the C3PAOs, the C3PAOs. These are the organizations that are authorized to go out and perform the CMMC assessments. Now that you have a good understanding of who all makes up the CMMC ecosystem, let's focus on what it's going to take for you to become a CMMC assessor. So next you'll go to CMMC roles and then assessing and certification. So it is cool. This is a good illustration of what it takes to become a CMMC assessor. As you can see, there are a lot of steps, a total of six steps. Before you start your journey to becoming a CMMC assessor, you got to confirm that you're qualified to actually be a CMMC assessor. Are you a U.S. citizen? So at this time, to become a CMMC assessor, you do have to be a U.S. citizen because once you go through all your training and you're ready to become a CMMC assessor, you have to apply for suitability. So essentially, suitability is a comprehensive background check performed by the federal government um, just to verify that you are suitable 
to have access to the sensitive data that you wield in the capacity of your role of serving as a CMMC assessor. So once you review the criteria, if you determine like, man, I'm not a U.S. citizen, or I don't think I'll pass a background check, then you can look into becoming a registered practitioner and say it. And as a registered practitioner, again, you'll be focusing on helping those organizations that's seeking certification, those OSCs, to prepare for their CMMC assessment. So if you determine, okay, yes, I'm a U.S. citizen, and yes, I, I'm pretty confident I can pass a government background check, then at that point, you're going to begin your assessor journey, and it is a long journey. In order to become a certified CMMC assessor, a CCA, you're going to need to become a CCP, the certified CMMC professional first. In order to become a CCP, you do have to go through training offered by the licensed training providers. You need to in the, locate a, a licensed training provider in the marketplace. And hey, look at here, you have a marketplace on the CyberAB website, which lists all of the licensed training providers who are authorized to offer the CCP training. Now the CCP training is typically three to five days either virtual or in person, but it is live training. I took my CCP training class virtually in November through Learning Tree, and it was a five-day course. So through my five-day CCP course, I was trained on everything that I needed to know to be a CCP. Once you complete your CCP training, you will need to take and pass your CCP exam. The CCP exam is 170 multiple choice questions you have four hours to complete it. During your CCP training, you're gonna learn the foundational information that you need to help organizations prepare for their CMMC assessments, and then also to serve as a member of the CMMC assessment teams where you'll be authorized to assess CMMC level one practices. Once you have passed your CCP exam, moving on to step three, and you're going to complete and submit your DOD suitability application so that the federal government can perform their comprehensive background check on you. The average processing time can take two to six months. I warned you, it's a comprehensive background check. While you're waiting on your suitability, you will continue on to step four, which will require you as a CCP to participate on three level two assessments, assessing only level one practices. Only certified assessors are permitted to assess the level two practices. In step five, you're going to complete your CMMC training, and it is three to five days, just like the CCP. And that will either be live or virtual training. I did the hybrid training offered through the CACO, which will include the CMMC provisional instructor and CMMC provisional assessor course that was offered in December. I don't think there are. I think that was the last course they offered in that hybrid format, but fortunately I was able to complete that. Once you have successfully completed your CCA training, the sixth step is you take and pass your CCA exam. The good news is the CCA exam is 150 questions, so 20 less questions than the CCP exam, and you have four hours to complete it. In my experience of taking both the CCP exam and the CCA exam, if I had to keep compare the two, I would say the CCP exam is more knowledge-based, tests your overall knowledge of the CMMC program, versus the CCA exam is really practitioner-focused. It's taking all the information that you learn as a CCP and really applying that knowledge. How are you going to perform the assessment? So I did find a CCA exam to be challenging. It's not the type of exam that you can take lightly. In my opinion, to pass the CCA exam, you really have to have a firm grasp of the CMMC content. Now as you pass the CCA exam, congratulations, you're almost there to the finish line, but I have to emphasize almost because there are some steps that you have to complete before officially getting your CCA badge. So again, you're a U.S. citizen, you've earned your CCP certification, you achieved your DOD suitability, you completed three level two assessments, assessing level one practices, 
you earned the CCC certification, and then you signed and paid all your fees to the, a, the cyber AB. Holy moly, that is a lot. But once you complete all that and your official badge carrying CMMC assessor, then now you can explore all of the great opportunities as a CCA. You have the choice to do consulting for those OSCs or actually serve on the CMMC assessment teams. So it should be a really exciting career. I hope me walking you through these steps give you a better understanding of what's required. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions.